Okay, today we're going to investigate the effects of a named environmental factor on the distribution of a given species. This is one of the required A-level biology practicals, but it's not required for AS. Now, the actual investigation we're going to do today is to investigate the effects of trampling, which is a biotic factor, but you could also in you know, investigate mowing or grazing, on the abundance of plantago species on grassland. Okay, now then, plantago is the genus name of plantains, which are very, very common grassland plants in this country. Um, there are two in particular that are common on the grassland, particularly where I live. Uh, one is the ribwort plantain, uh, and this has long leaves, which are easily recognisable because they have ribs running parallel to the, re the leaves there. Uh, the other species that's very common is the common plantain, plantago major, which has more kind of what I call mousier shaped leaves. They're kind of broader leaves, but it does still have the ribs running along the leaves. Okay, sort of parallel along the leaf there. Okay, so you need to decide which is the most common species in your area before you carry out this practical. Now then, uh, we've decided today, if we're comparing mowed, well, trampled and untrampled ground, I've set out um, a grid on the rugby pitch. This is going to be my trampled site here. Okay, now to do this, I have used two pieces of string with meter markings. So I've been along here with a meter ruler and every time I come to a meter I've marked this with coloured sticky tape so I know the meters. You can use very long roll out, you know, wind out tape measures instead if you have those. So we've set out a grid using two 10 meter pieces of string and three tent pegs. <clears throat> now it's really important when we're sampling plant species like this that we carry out random sampling. Uh, we do this to avoid bias. So I'm now also going to need my iPhone, which I've downloaded a random number generator app. And this is going to allow me to generate random number coordinates to tell me where to position a frame quadrat. Okay, so we're going to use a frame quadrat. This is a frame quadrat. You don't need the gridded one. You can just use a square. And we're going to position this exactly where our random coordinates tell us. And then we are going to count the number of plantains of our chosen species in that grid, okay? So my first coordinates, I've got somebody over here stood at one metre marking, because my first coordinates was one, and my second coordinate, uh, random number was two, so I've got somebody here at the two metre position, so it does help if you've got a couple of assistants here. So I now need to position my quadrat with its corner, and you need to be consistent in how you position them, okay, at the one, two metre mark. I'm then going to have a look in the quadrat, and basically, I need to actually work out the frequency of plantains in this quadrat, in this whole quadrat. So I'm just going to go along and count them. Okay, obviously then, I'm going to record this in my results table, you'll see there. I've got quadrat number, I'm going to carry out 10 quadrats today, that's not really enough. Uh, you know, 30 would be a better number, but ideally, the, the higher the abundance of species, you know, the more species you've got, the richer the environment, the habitat, uh, the larger number of quadrats you generally carry out. Okay, so I've got quadrat number here, and in these here, I'm going to do this on trampled ground, the rugby pitch first, uh, and it's the frequency of plantains, and it was the number of plantains in each quadrat. We're then going to move and actually do 10 random coordinates in a grid exactly the same, but in an area of grassland alongside the rugby pitch that's not trampled at all, it's just general parkland. Now, once we've collected our results, it's not good enough to just leave it at that. We have to actually carry out some analysis. So once you've collected your results of this investigation, it's very easy to calculate the mean frequency of plantains in each area, so the mean of your 10 quadrats for each area. You could then also calculate the standard deviation for each area, and you could actually then look to see if your standard deviations overlap, and that will tell you if there's a real difference between the two means. But this is still not enough to draw any kind of scientific conclusion. What we have to do next is carry out some kind of statistical analysis, and we do that to calculate the probability 
that any difference between the mean values occurred by chance. We need to know that probability and if it's a high probability then we can't accept the difference. It probably is just chance. So the kind of test we would carry out here because we're comparing the mean values of, of two sets of data would be a t-test. This is a test that you need to know its use, you need to be able to interpret its results but you will not be actually asked to carry out the t-test in an exam because it does take too long.